exercise 1, part D. For the following functions, well, actually only for the function in part D, uh, do the following. Determine the equations of the asymptotes, and state the domain, etc., etc. Okay, so let us start with this function y equals 3x minus 1 over x plus 2. So this is part D of the exercise. To do the first, determine the equations of the asymptotes, I have to use the usual method. Well, the vertical equation, the, verti the, the equation of the vertical asymptote is obtained by demanding that the denominator is zero for that, because then the, the function is not defined and it approaches plus or minus infinity. So if I look at the denominator, I see that the equation of this asymptote is going to be x equals negative 2. Because when x is negative 2 and you substitute it here, you get 0 in the denominator. So the vertical asymptote has to have the equation x equals negative 2. As for the horizontal, horizontal asymptote, we use the quick technique uh, presented in the example before. So I will try to transform the formula of the function, uh, representing the function, dividing both the numerator and denominator by x. Okay, so if I do that, I have the fraction in this form, 3x minus 1 over x over x plus 2 over x, and then I can write it as 3x over x minus 1 over x divided by x over x plus 2 over x. And you see this is exactly 3x over x is just 3 minus 1 over x divided by 1 plus 2 over x. Well, now as x approaches plus or minus uh, approaches plus or minus infinity, we see that this fraction here approaches 0 and 2 over x also approaches 0. Therefore, the fraction, the function value here has to approach the value 3 minus 0 over 1 plus 0, which is exactly 3. Okay, so we can say that as x approaches plus or minus infinity, then y approaches number 3. Therefore, the horizontal asymptote has the equation y equals 3. Okay, and this concludes part, the first part of this exercise to determine the equation, equations of the asymptotes. Now, in the second part, we should state the domain and the range. Well, to do that, I need to sketch the graph first. So I will choose to do far, the fifth part of this exercise well actually at least i it's it's important to have some idea about how the graph looks or what what it looks like so let me go here 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 i have the axes so this is the y axis the x axis here is the this is the origin of the system and these two asymptotes now from the equation of the vertical asymptote x equals negative 2, I know that I have to shift this one to the position represented by x equals negative 2. So this is the asymptote with the equation x equals negative 2, and this number here is minus 2. Okay, And the second asymptote, the horizontal asymptote, has the equation y equals 3, and therefore I have to shift it to the value of 3, like this. So this asymptote has the equation of y equals 3, and this number here is just 3 on the y-axis. Now, uh, we need to establish the graph. So to find the graph of this function, I need to know where the branches of the hyperbola reside, whether it's in, in the first and third quadrant or second and fourth quadrant. So to do that, I need the sine diagram of this function. Okay, so let me do it. 
this is the x-axis now I need zeros zeros so from the numerator I see that the zero of the numerator is obtained from the equation 3x minus 1 equals 0 and hence 3x equals 1 and hence x equals 1 third okay so 1 third is 1 0 and the other one the 0 from the, uh, represent uh, uh, corresponding to the denominator is the 0 x equals negative 2 so there are two zeros negative 2 and positive 1 third so this is the x axis and the function is not defined at negative 2 so therefore there is the asymptote at negative 2 now uh, you see that the value of x being equal to 0 sits in this middle interval 0 is somewhere here so when I substitute 0 into this equation what I get is minus 1 over 2 so the value is then negative so the value of the function has to be negative in this middle interval then it has to change sign around this 0 so it has to be positive in this third interval well and it changes the signs also, sign also here so it has to be positive here okay this means that as x approaches negative 2 from the left the function should go to the positive infinity and as x approaches negative 2 from the right the function value should go or should approach negative infinity okay so this should be uh, also recorded here so when we approach negative 2 from the right the function value should go to negative infinity when we approach it from the left the function value should go to the positive infinity okay so this is what we know already now we need the zeros of the function uh, sorry not zeros I, I thought about the intercepts so this is in part C and then I will come back to part uh, in to the part 2 okay to find the intercept let's start with the X intercept X intercept as we already know corresponds to the zero of the numerator because if the numerator is zero then the whole fraction is zero and it means that y equals zero and this is actually the value corresponding to the x-intercept so we know that when x equals one-third then the function value is zero so we can write it here if x equals one-third which is somewhere here the function value is zero so this is one this number here is one and one-third is pos positioned somewhere here so it's we can find it here this is one-third and here is the zero of the function so the function passes through this point the, this is the uh, x-intercept actually now to find the y-intercept of the function the y-intercept can be obtained by substituting x equals 0 to this equation so if you substitute x being equal to 0 to it you obtain minus 1 over 2 so the uh, if x is 0 then y equals minus 1 over 2 and this corresponds to the y intercept so the y intercept is minus 1 minus 1 half minus 1 half so it should be located somewhere here okay so this should be it so uh, I may use an arrow to established it's this fact so this is minus one half so what we know is that this hyperbola passes through these two points and it approaches negative infinity as it as it approaches as x approaches negative two from the right so I may sketch it like this okay so it has to approach this asymptote from below pass through these two points and approach Oh, oh, oh this asymptote like that and it should behave correspondingly on this side so something like this perhaps okay now I can get back to part 2 and state the domain in range because now I can imagine the function well it could have been done even before uh, without this graph of course 
just using the knowledge about the asymptotes, but it's helpful to have the graph. Okay, so let me state the domain of the function. The domain of the function you see corresponds to all such values of x for which x is different from, you can say what? Well, it has to be different from negative 2. Okay, so this is the domain of the function. As for the range of the function, well, it is or is represented by all the values of y such that y is, you see, it, it cannot be equal to 3 because then the function would have to cross its asymptote. It, it never happens. So y is different from number 3. So this is the solution to part ii, okay? So it solves it. So this is the domain and the range of the function. So let me check this exercise. We have already done the following. We have done first part, determine the equations of the asymptotes. Here they are, this one and this one. State the domain. Well, it was accomplished here. Well, of course, it's OK. Then find the axis intercept. Well, oh, this is already uh, completed because we have two axis intercepts. This negative one half is the y intercept and one third is the x intercept. Okay, so this is completed already. And discuss the behavior of the function as it approaches its asymptotes. Well, this is what I have to do yet. So let me do it here. Uh, as x approaches positive infinity, well, you can see it. Y approaches number 3, but it does it from below. So it's 3 and use this minus sign here. As x approaches negative infinity, so when we move to the left, you see that y approaches value 3, but from above. So you use plus here. Now we have to look at the vertical asymptote. As x approaches number negative 2 from the right, y approaches negative infinity. You see the function value shoots to negative infinity like this. And as x approaches negative 2 from the left, so as we approach negative 2 from the left, you see the function value y approaches positive infinity. So this is the behavior of the function asymptotic behavior, so as it approaches its asymptotes. In part 5, sketch the graph, well, this was already, this has been accomplished just a minute ago, you see, you have the graph, so everything is completed in this exercise.